Nuclear Breakthrough, Cancer Nuclear Bomb How China Shattered the Western Monopoly Why did China develop the cancer nuclear bomb first? Why are Western countries still holding back China? How did China get ahead? Why are Western countries still struggling? If you're seeing this, don't scroll away just yet. Today, I'm dropping a bombshell that's set to shake up the global medical community. We've always heard about how advanced foreign technology is, with high-end medical equipment and imported drugs creating bottlenecks for us. But recently, China just played its trump card, successfully mastering yttrium-90, Y90, microsphere technology, often hailed as the cancer nuclear bomb in liver cancer treatment. This technology was previously only wielded by a handful of countries globally, with Western nations tightly gripping the core know-how. Now, China has surprisingly overtaken them in a curveball maneuver. What's even more exciting is that the story behind this is 10 times more fascinating than what appears on the surface. The following content will absolutely revolutionize your perception of domestically produced medical technology. Buckle up, we're taking off. Next, I'll take you on a deep dive into the story behind this technological breakthrough, examining how China broke the Western monopoly and just how groundbreaking this technology truly is. 1. The cancer nuclear bomb emerges. Why did China take the lead? On the battlefield of cancer treatment, liver cancer has always been a Damocles sword hanging over the medical community. According to the World Health Organization, over 900,000 new liver cancer cases are reported globally each year, with China accounting for more than 50% of these patients. For those with advanced liver cancer, the five-year survival rate is less than 12%. Traditional treatments are like shooting in the dark, surgical resection can be futile due to cancer cell metastasis, and chemotherapy drugs, while killing tumor cells, also cause severe side effects like bone marrow suppression and gastrointestinal ulcers, akin to killing a thousand enemies at the cost of 800 of your own. The advent of Y90 microsphere technology has completely rewritten the rules of liver cancer treatment. These radioactive microspheres, with a diameter of only 20 to 60 micrometers, are like nanosubmarines carrying a nuclear arsenal. Delivered via catheterization into the hepatic artery, they travel through the body's complex vascular network directly to the tumor's layer. Each microsphere releases beta radiation with a tissue penetration range of only 2.5 centimeters but can deliver a staggering radiation dose of up to 150 grays within 14 days, essentially detonating a miniature nuclear bomb inside the cancer cells, precisely destroying tumor tissue. What's even more astonishing is that this precision demolition method can limit damage to surrounding healthy liver tissue to within 5%, greatly enhancing treatment safety. However, this cutting-edge technology, hailed as the bane of liver cancer, was long protected by technological barriers erected by Western pharmaceutical companies. American glass microspheres, SIR spheres, and Australian resin microspheres, Therosphere, dominated 95% of the global market, with a single product costing as much as 280,000 renminbi. Patients not only faced exorbitant costs but also a 3-6 to six month import approval period. More critically, the particle size specifications of imported products could not fully accommodate Chinese patients leaving some patients with thinner tumor-supplying blood vessels unable to benefit. The treatment gap caused by technological monopoly became a shadow hanging over countless Chinese liver cancer patients. But at Qinshan Nuclear Power Plant, Chinese engineers pulled off a huge feat they plunged into the heavy water reactor plant, known as the Wampoa Military Academy of the Nuclear Industry, spending three years in its dark, confined spaces, accompanied by precision instruments, tirelessly overcoming three hell-level challenges. The first challenge was pushing the manufacturing precision of glass microspheres to the extreme. Engineers sculpted these microspheres, less than one-third the diameter of a human hair, like nanoscale artworks, ensuring uniform texture and reliable strength, while also enabling them to navigate precisely through the complex human vascular system, bypassing healthy tissue to reach the tumor's core. The second challenge was achieving the transmutation of yttrium-89 to yttrium-90 through neutron bombardment. The research team repeatedly adjusted reactor parameters, delicately fine-tuning the nuclear reaction on a tightrope, finally overcoming the technical bottleneck of radioactive isotope conversion rate, making each microsphere a nuclear warhead for precisely attacking cancer cells. 
the most difficult challenge was breaking through the mass production process. Engineers innovatively modified the reactor's operating mode, drawing inspiration from industrial assembly lines to break down the complex nuclear reaction process into standardized procedures. After countless debugging and optimization, they successfully achieved stable, continuous production, increasing the output of the originally precious Y90 microspheres several times over. This series of game-changing operations directly slashed the exorbitant price of imported microspheres, which often cost two to three hundred thousand per treatment, by half, giving more cancer patients a new lease on life. In the global medical technology landscape, Western countries have long built impenetrable barriers through technological monopolies and capital advantages. However, in the field of Y90 microsphere technology, hailed as the cancer nuclear bomb, these traditional giants have found themselves in a research and development predicament. Patent jungle tactics have become a double-edged sword for them, over-reliance on patent barriers has led to a strict, closed system of technology across different companies and institutions, causing poor, connection, coordination, between various stages. Our Andy investments often running into hundreds of millions of dollars in lengthy clinical trial periods further exacerbate cost pressures. This patent monetization first R&D logic ultimately leads to slow technology adoption and difficulty in forming large-scale production capabilities. In contrast, China, leveraging the advantages of its new whole nation system, rapidly integrated top resources from various fields such as medicine, nuclear industry, and material science, forming cross-disciplinary teams for tackling key problems. Engineers, with the persistence of 10 years to sharpen a sword, broke through core technical bottlenecks in precise preparation and targeted delivery of radioactive microspheres. Research institutions and enterprises, through deep integration of industry, academia, and research, rapidly transformed laboratory results into industrialized capabilities. From the approval of the first domestic Y90 microsphere in 2019 to the breakthrough in clinical application in 2023, China took only four years to complete what Western countries failed to achieve in a decade. This breakthrough battle in the field of nuclear medicine is essentially a dimension-reducing breakthrough of China's new innovation system against the traditional Western R&D model, using institutional synergy to solve technological isolation and efficient execution to break cost constraints, providing a new paradigm for the domestic production of high-end medical equipment globally. 2. The Fig Leaf of Western Bottlenecks Ripped Off by China Looking back at the development history of Y90 microspheres in Western countries, it's full of all bark and no bite embarrassment. The United States started relevant research as early as 20 years ago, with impressive lab data, but when it came to industrialization, either reactor power was insufficient, or microsphere quality was unstable. France, an old nuclear power in Europe, is still struggling with the precise embolization of microspheres. More ironically, these countries sell equipment at high prices while imposing technological blockades on China, fearing their rice bowl would be snatched. In contrast, Chinese engineers at Qinchon Nuclear Power Plant were not intimidated by the so-called technological gap. They discovered that heavy water reactors were practically custom-made for Y90 microspheres, directly transforming nuclear power plants into life-saving factories. While Western countries were still debating paper data, China had already put microspheres into clinical use, offering a ray of hope to patients with advanced liver cancer. This lab-to-bedside Chinese speed completely shattered the myth of Western invincibility in nuclear medicine. Western arrogance in medical technology is now backfiring on them. Over-reliance on patent monopolies and technological barriers, coupled with a disregard for practical industrialization needs, has led to a serious disconnect between research and application. China, with its problem-oriented pragmatic thinking, starts from actual patient needs and replaces paper culture with an engineer culture, achieving breakthroughs in cutting-edge fields. This serves as a reminder to global technological competition. True technological hegemony is always held by those who can solve practical problems. 3. From being neck-blocked to neck-blocking others, how did China do it? The breakthrough in Y90 microsphere technology is by no means an accident. Just look at China's nuclear industry assets, half of the world's nuclear power units under construction are in China, and the scale of its nuclear material R&D team is larger than that of Western countries combined, not to mention black technologies like the artificial sun. 
While other countries are still struggling with millimeter-level precision for microspheres, China has long been proficient in nanolevel processing. More crucially, China's innovation model is overturning tradition. Western pharmaceutical companies engage in R&D, often spending tens of billions of dollars over a decade, with results often held hostage by capital. China, on the other hand, adopts an integrated industry academia research medical model, pushing for technological breakthroughs by reverse engineering from doctors' clinical needs, and then leveraging the whole nation system to solve mass production challenges. This make-what-the-people-need approach has led to increasingly frequent breakthroughs in China's medical technology, from CT machines to artificial hearts, witnessing one comeback battle after another. Commentary, China's rise in high-end medical technology is essentially a victory for its production relations. While Western countries are constrained by capital logic and trapped in a profit-driven R&D vicious circle, China uses institutional advantages to break the boundaries of technological innovation. From following to leading, China has not only proven its technological prowess but also demonstrated a more efficient and inclusive path to innovation for the world. In the future, this model may reshape the global competitive landscape in medical technology. 4. How will this technological revolution change the lives of ordinary people? The domestic production of Y90 microspheres directly benefits cancer patients. What was once a life-saving drug costing over 200,000 renminbi per dose is now expected to drop below 100,000 renminbi, making it affordable for more families. More importantly, this technological breakthrough is leveraging the entire nuclear medicine industry. Not only can China now produce its own microspheres, but it is also developing new radionuclide drugs for lung cancer and pancreatic cancer. In the future, this may free more cancer patients from the nightmare of sky-high drug prices. Behind this lies China's commitment as a major nation to technology for good. While Western countries still use high-end medical technology as a tool for wealth accumulation, China is transforming cutting-edge technology into a weapon for universal public welfare. From anti-epidemic vaccines to anti-cancer marvels, China has proven through its actions that a truly technologically powerful nation is not judged by how many patents it monopolizes, but by how much hope it can bring to ordinary people. Commentary, the essence of medical technology should be to protect lives, not to create a life gap. Western countries' monopoly in high-end medical fields has left countless patients unable to afford treatment due to exorbitant...